you've just started Final Fantasy XIV and you're now being quest slapped in the face with blue quest icons all over the place. And it's all a bit confusing as you try to enjoy your MSQ, unlocking dungeons and content as you go, putting the anxiety of so many blue quests behind you, which is okay, you could definitely do that. However, I should mention blue quests unlock content. Some you may want right now and others you can skip till endgame. Some unlock raids and dungeons that are not automatically progressed through the MSQ and are easily missable. Others unlock a mad barber, the ability to change your armor appearance, and even the ability to use a mount. That one might be very handy. So let's go over some important and useful blue quests to grab as you level through Final Fantasy. First off, we'll be using the content unlock list over on Final Fantasy XIV Wiki, a website I covered in my website's video previously. I'll link the video and the website in the description so you can have a look at later if you're curious. And I'll have every side quest that I mention on screen with its location and coordinates where possible to make things a little easier. Now, bear in mind, blue quests become available as you level and when you complete certain quests from the main story questline. Basically, when they're red, you won't be able to do them until you've either leveled up or you've completed a specific quest. So, to the list. First off, at level 10, you'll unlock the ability to switch jobs so you'll be able to pick up new classes. These will be the job classes you had a choice between when creating your character, with the addition of the rogue job which becomes the ninja later on as well as the crafting and gathering jobs that are littered around the main cities. At level 15, you'll be able to undertake fashion-orientated side quests to unlock the ability to dye gear, to cast glamour, and to also create glamour plates. Glamour plates are basically fashion sets you can put together that automatically apply themselves to your character's class gear. You'll also be able to unlock the Aesthetician, which is basically a bright, colourful Sweeney Todd for when you need a new haircut. Besides fashion at level 15, you'll also be able to unlock the Gold Saucer, which is basically a theme park full of mini-games. And you'll also be able to unlock the Challenge Log. The Challenge Log is probably the most important at level 15, as it gives you extra gill and experience for completing objectives that you will probably progress as you play the game normally. So no point missing out on free experience and gill. At level 17, through the MSQ, you'll unlock the ability to hire retainers. However, you'll also unlock a side quest called an ill-conceived venture that will allow you to send your retainers out on their own missions to bring back items that you can then keep for yourself or sell on the market board. Also at level 17, you'll be able to unlock Palace of the Dead, your first deep dungeon, which is basically a dungeon that changes every time you move floor and the layout's never the same any time you do it. Palace of the Dead has 200 floors to get through and usually is where low-level players go to level jobs. It can be completed by group or by solo. However, solo is a challenge in and of itself and it even comes with its own title. At level 19, you can unlock Materia Melding and Extraction. You won't actually need these until endgame, but it's there if you want it out of the way. Materia in Final Fantasy XIV is basically slottable stats to help make gear a bit stronger, which you will probably want and need at endgame. At level 20, you can unlock the dungeon Halatali by doing its side quest. This is the first of many dungeons that isn't unlocked through the MSQ, and it is missable. Also at level 20, and it's a big one, it's unlocking mounts through the side quest My Little Chocobo. You'll want a mount, unless you're role-playing the Lord of the Rings. You're, you're not going to want to spend your time walking from quest to quest for the entire game, unless you do want to do that, in which case, fair play, this scenario's lovely. For the housing and apartment enthusiasts, you can also unlock the sightseeing log at level 20. It lets you unlock paintings by the painter in Idleshire. You know the White Wolf Gate in New Gridania? That's always locked. Well, at level 29, you can complete the Broadening Horizons quest to open it. At level 30, you can learn to do synthesis items through the Gone to Pieces quest, which is basically a way of breaking down unwanted items into crafting materials, or wanted items. Live dangerously if you must. Now, take note, you will need to reach level 30 on a crafting job, or disciplines of the hand as they are called, to be able to accept the quest. Getting your combat jobs to level 30 won't cut it, unfortunately. Also at level 30, you can unlock PvP and roulettes. You'll get the quest from your grand company that will unlock the Wolves Den Pier, which is a PvP hub. Here you'll find the quest for each PvP mode. PvP has its own hotbar layout, so I suggest you use your time at the Wolves Den to set them up, as your bar will be blank to begin with. Kind of like your expression if you popped into a PvP match and didn't set up your bars. At level 35, you'll find another dungeon called the Sunken Temple of Karn. And at level 36, you'll find the Cutter's Cry Dungeon. Dungeons for days.
At level 41, you'll be able to unlock the Beast Tribe quests for the Ixel and the Kobolds, followed by the Sylph at level 42, and the Amalja at level 43, and the Sahagan at level 44, as long as you have progressed your main quests far enough. They are basically daily quests that offer a little experience and gill that come with reputation levels and rewards. Think of them as a faction that you are trying to impress repeatedly for new things to ride. Level 44 will also unlock the quest Fort of Fear that unlocks the Dismal Dungeon, followed by the Orm Vale Dungeon at level 47, a dungeon you'll learn to hate with a smile. At level 47 you'll also unlock Adventurer Squadrons, these are NPCs under your command that you can send on missions and even help clear the Realm Aboard dungeons with if you in fact hate people or Orm Vale. You will however need to get your appropriate rank with your Grand Company before you can undertake this side quest. Your next mountain of content unlocks come at level 50. First off, you'll unlock Hunts. This is where you get to hunt rare creatures for achievements, currencies and rewards. You'll want these. After that it gets a little weird for a Realm of Born because some side quests stop being a choice and become compulsory. Because a lot of these quests connect to the main story questline and by that I mean you won't be able to progress to Heaven's Ward without doing them. These include Ifrit Bleeds We Could Kill It, In For Garuda Awakening, In A Titan Spot which are hard mode trial versions of the primals you fought throughout a Realm of Born, after which you will need to unlock the Alliance Raids for a Realm of Born which are Labyrinth of Ancients, Sycorus Tower and A World of Darkness to finish off the Alliance Raid tier list so you can eventually continue the main story quest to move on to Heaven's Ward. It's a complete pain in the arse and a little unnecessary. I myself enjoyed it, others not so much, but the bright side is you won't have to jump through side quests, related hoops to progress through future expansions. A Realm Reborn is rough, but you're in Heaven's Ward now, it's all up from here. In some cases, literally. Now we're in Heaven's Ward, and that means new jobs bitches! At level 50 you can pick up the new jobs from Ishgard which are Dark Knight, Astrologian and The Machinist. Yes I did in fact myself leg it for the Dark Knight the moment I arrived and I will do it every time I make a new character. You can also unlock the Blue Mage job at this point but that's a very different form of content that I won't cover here. Mine's still level 1, I'm by no means an authority on Blue Mage, I don't even know what that is. At level 51 you'll be able to unlock the Dusk Vigil Dungeon, your first dungeon of Heaven's Ward and it's a side quest. At 52 you'll be able to unlock the Heaven's Ward Sightseeing for more paintings. And at level 53 you can pick up the Vath Daily Beast Tribes quests. At 53 you can also unlock your next set of hunts, you will need to have unlocked hunts in a Realm of Born first to have access to this though, so no skipping ahead. At level 56 you'll be able to unlock even more hunts. And at level 57 you can pick up the next Beast Tribe dailies for the Vanu Vanu Tribe. And at level 59 you can get the next set of hunts. And at level 60 you can pick up the final set of hunts for Heaven's Wards. Hunts. Hunts for days. From here you can either pop straight onto Stormblood content, or you can unlock all the various raids, trials and dungeons. Unlike with a Realm of Born, you do have a choice this turn around. I myself would recommend doing the containment trials the Alexander Raid questline and the Shadow of Mock Alliance questline, as they are fantastic content and a giant step up from a Realm of Born, plus it'll bolster your roulettes a bit for when you're levelling alt jobs. You are level 60 and about to pop off to Stormblood, so why not pick up the new jobs while you're at it? The new jobs are Gunbreaker and Dancer. You may only be entering Stormblood now, but you will need to have the Shadowbringers expansion to unlock these as well. I made a beeline for the Gunbreaker. I'm not a great tank by any means, but huge swords that gets everybody's attention seems to be my kink, and the gunbreaker don't fire no blanks. Against all odds, I think my parents are proud of me. Beginning at level 61, for this you'll be able to unlock a new deep dungeon called Heaven on High. It follows the same principle as Palace of the Dead, you will need to have cleared the 50th floor of Palace of the Dead though before you can accept this quest. Level 61 also brings Stormblood's hunts as well, so you can keep that hunt train rolling. At level 63 you'll be able to unlock the Shisui of the Violet Tides dungeon, it's at the bottom of the ocean so carefully don't miss it. Also at level 63 you can unlock your first beast tribe quests with the Kojin as well as your next set of hunt quests. At level 66 comes even more hunt quests and to finish off the beast tribes of Stormblood comes the Ananta daily quest at level 67. Finally once you hit 70, the waterfall of content begins anew with more raids, trials, alliance raids and dungeons. 
which are all worth doing. This includes the hunt for Omega Normal raids and the return to Ivalis Alliance raids. But more notable is the addition of Eureka, which is its own instance region, which does come with its own quests, form of leveling and combat mechanics. It has a multitude of rewards and can be very good leveling for alt jobs. These aren't essential by any means and can be left until you're at endgame or max level. Or you're just looking for something new to do. And of course, level 70 doesn't just bring a wealth of new content and new expansions to explore. It also brings two new jobs, the Reaper and the Sage. You will need to have the Endwalker expansion as well as being level 70 to unlock these new jobs. Following previous job mentions, yes, I went for the Reaper, the site is huge, and I could not contain my excitement. That does sound like an innuendo now that I think about it though. And of course, now that we've hit Shadowbringers, we get more hunts. Nuts for days. At level 73, you'll unlock tribal beast dailies for the Pixies, as well as more hunts. Nuts, nuts for days. At level 75, we get more tribal quests for Shadowbringers, this time with the Katari, so that's some extra daily experience. And at level 76, even more nuts. I mean hunts. On to level 78, which offers the final set of tribal daily quests, this time for the dwarfs. And I do need to point this out, the quest is called It's Dwarfin' Time. The fact that reference makes me happy really shows my age, which doesn't actually make me that happy. Congratulations, you're level 80. Now you have all the nuts in the form of the last set of hunt quests that your entire nut livelihood could desire. Now that you're level 80, things follow just as the end game of Stormblood did. Lots of dungeons, trials, raids and alliance raids to sink your teeth into. And again, it's not compulsory. Continue on with the MSQ or do whatever it is that brings you joy and excitement at this point. Plus, just like Stormblood with Eureka, Shadowbringers has the Bajan Southern Front. Its own instance region with its own storyline, achievements, form of combat and awards. And just like Eureka, it could be a very good form of leveling for alt jobs. And just as it was with Stormblood, not compulsory. They are worth doing at least once, but it can always be left until you finish the MSQ or you're just looking for something new to do. So finally, Endwalk. You're level 80 and at level 80 you can pick up the first set of hunt quest dailies because experience, gill and rewards are king. And at level 83, you get your next set of hunt quests, followed by more at level 89, and then again at level 90. And that's that. Side quests between level 80 and level 90 are pretty straightforward, as everything kicks off at level 90 with variant dungeons, criterion dungeons, more normal dungeons, trials, raids, alliance raids, beast tribe quests, your own island sanctuary, and even a new deep dungeon. The whole shebang. But those are the more notable ones. I did leave out side quests such as Levy quests and Aether Currents, not because they aren't important. Aether Current quests are extremely important as you will need to get all of these in a region to unlock the ability to fly there, with the exception of A Realm of Born where you automatically unlock flying at the end of the expansion. But then again, if you do plan on just walking around, do as you will, the scenery is delightful. But I am going to assume that those are the ones you are doing the moment you see them or you are sprinting back for them the moment you reach an expansion's level cap. So with that said, if you found this video helpful or useful in any way, do drop a like and consider subscribing. If there's something I missed or should have listed, or if you have any questions or suggestions, why not comment below and let me know. We can have a chat about it. You can also follow me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash dyinglegacy to catch content live, or to hang out with our growing guild-like community. And that's it. Go on and unlock what you need or want. The video's over and enjoy all that Eorzea has to offer. I'm Dying Legacy, take care of yourselves, and keep being awesome.